Column level security or a column level masking is a common requirement when dealing with sensitive data stored in your data warehouse tables. Let's consider a customer table containing personal identifiable information or sensitive column such as government ID, date of birth, credit card number for a customer. This detail should only be visible to authorized users with appropriate role within your data warehouse platform. So, if I query the customer table using highest privilege role, the role can see all the customer data stored as shown here. However, when a user with the least privilege role access the same table, the sensitive information gets masked or obfuscated. Additionally, if another user with elevated privileges query the customer table, they can see partially masked data. And if this is your requirement where you need to protect the sensitive fields in your data project, this is called column level security. And Snowflake supports the column level security using dynamic data masking policy approach, where the underlying data is not changed and based on the role, column level information is masked or obfuscated dynamically when the table is queried. This video will explain how to implement column level security in Snowflake, including its limitations and tricky technical interview questions that may come up in your job search. So stay tuned until the end to learn all about column level security and dynamic data masking policies in Snowflake. Welcome to my channel Data Engineering Simplify. For all my demonstration, I will be utilizing the free trial edition of Snowflake on AWS. Make sure to adjust the video quality to 4K since all my recordings are in that resolution. To speed up your learning process, consider increasing the playback speed to 1.25x or 1.5x. For direct communication, feel free to message me on my Instagram account or join my exclusive Facebook group. If you are interested in systematically enhancing your Snowflake skill, check out my premium Udemy courses. To showcase column level security in Snowflake, we will set up a customer table with columns containing sensitive data. We aim to restrict access to this data for developers with minimal privileges while allowing them to access the customer data for development purpose. Let's assume the system admin role owns a table and has full authority to view all the customer data, including personal identifiable information, so-called PII. When a user with the system role queries the customer table, this is how the results are displayed. Column names, government ID, date of birth, credit card numbers are visible and no column level security is applied. In the next scenario, when user with a public role queries the customer table, according to the column level security rule, column data in the government ID, date of birth and the credit card number column should be fully masked. Here is how the result should look. Now, when another user with user admin role queries the customer table, the data in government ID, date of birth and credit card number column should be partially masked. Here how the result should look. So let's go over to our SnowSite web UI to see all of these scenarios in action. So this is the worksheet in my SnowSite web UI called column level security. First, we are going to create a database and a schema. So all my objects should reside in this schema. For this entire exercise, I am going to use system admin role to create all the objects. And as we progress, we will change the role and try to simulate our column level security behavior. So let me quickly create a database called demo and a schema called my schema. So I got my demo database and my schema. I can also verify from here. Database context is demo and my schema context is my underscore SCH. Now let's create a table called customer table, which has customer ID, first name, last name, gender, government ID, date of birth, annual income, credit card number, card provider, mobile number, address, and created on. So the customer table got created successfully. Now let's run the describe command to describe the customer table. So I have total 12 column in my table. I can also go to this database menu, click on demo, click on my schema and click on tables. And here I can see my customer table. So the owner of the customer table is system admin and it is created just now. I do not have any data set available in the table. I can click on columns and all the columns are listed here. Let me shrink this. Here there is a field called masking policy 
And once we enable the column level security using masking policy, we would see how this particular information gets populated. In the describe table, I can also see a field called policy name and this policy name will primarily hold the policy which is associated with your column. Let's load some sample data and query the table. So this is my customer.csv which has all the customer data and I have around 1000 customer record available. And this is the header which we will skip during the data loading. So let's go to our SnowSight Web UI data loader feature to load this CSV file into the customer table. So I can go to my demo database, my schema, customer table, and from this button, I can load this data set into the customer table. I will drag drop this customer file. So this is my customer.csv and the size is 194.1 KB. So this is the database in schema and this is the table where this CSV file will get loaded. So let me click on the next button. So Snowflake data loader is smart enough to understand what kind of file format to be selected. It has already selected CSV or a TSV. And here we can make some changes to make sure that our file is processed appropriately. So if you look into this data file, we have this address and this address information is enclosed with double quote. So we need to make sure that while defining the file format, we need to select this double quote as an enclosed character. So here I selected double quote and I will say skip first line and it should really match column to column and I am keeping rest of the information as is. I can also choose load only valid data from the file. Let's choose that to avoid any error. Alternatively, you can click on show SQL and it will show what it is doing. It is under the hood running a copy command. So let me go back and click on load button. So the data size is very small and it shows a confirmation message that 1000 rows successfully inserted into the table. Let me click on done. This page will get refreshed automatically. However, this information does not get refreshed sometime and it is showing only the first 100 rows. And if I can click on copy history, I can see where the data is copied from and how many rows are being processed. And this is the status and you can also see the location here. So all the informations are recorded. Again, I have a dedicated playlist on data loading and if you are not fully aware about all the different aspects of a data loading, you can watch this playlist. Now if you see, I am still having a system admin role and this is my database and schema and here also I have given fully qualified name. Now let me run this select query. So this is my full data set and this data is matching with my CSV file. These are the column which in many large enterprise can be identified as a sensitive information or personal identifiable information. There is a good chance that if you are following certain compliance, the compliance authority expect you to hide or mask this data set and should not be available to the data developer or any other unauthorized person. And that is we call it column level masking or dynamic data masking. Now to simulate the dynamic data masking, I am going to select two different roles. First is a public role and second is that user admin role. The public role will be the least privileged role and user admin role will be treated as an elevated role. So before this role access the demo database, my schema and the customer table, we need to grant certain permission and we will see how the result look before applying the column level security and after applying the column level security. Of, now there are set of grant SQL statement which can be executed to allow these two profiles to access the warehouse and the table and I can quickly run this query. However, you can also do it in alternative way without writing a query. So let me show you how you can do that. So if you go to the database demo and let's say you, if you want to allow public role and user admin role to have an access to the demo database and my schema, you can go there and here you can say privileges, you can select public role and you can say usage and you can say grant privileges. Now you can see that this public role has a usage access to demo database and if I go to likewise I can. So my public role and user admin role can access the demo database. Let me do the same thing for a schema.
so this is done i can also go to admin under warehouse and for that make sure that i am using system admin profile and here i can click on my compute warehouse and i can also click on a privileges and make sure that my public role has monitor and usage access as well as user admin will have access to this warehouse with operate and usage privileges alternatively you can simply execute these queries and this query will do the same thing what we have done through the ui so we have given the usage access to the database as well as the schema now we would like to give the select access on the customer table to these two roles let me execute these queries so it is done successfully now right now my role is system admin and this is my context and let me run this customer table once again yes i am able to access the customer data now if i change this role to public and i am having access to the compute warehouse and i can also see demo my schema and let's see if i can access the customer table and select the data from the customer table yes i can access the data from the public role if i try and change it to the user admin now my role is user admin and let's see if i can select the data or not data is visible however this column level security is yet to be applied i am able to see all the pii data from the customer table which is not the expected behavior changing my role back to system admin so to apply a column level security or so called data masking we have to create a masking policy and that masking policy looks very similar to a function as shown here if you look into this highlighted part here i am creating an object called policy object and name of the policy object is pii masking policy and this is a schema level object so whenever i run this create or a replace statement it will create a policy object under this schema this takes an input and this input has a data type and then it has a return type whenever you are creating a masking policy the return type should match with your input data type if there is a mismatch then it will not behave as expected and sometime it throws an error during creation we can create different kind of policies and this is one of the type called masking policy and there you have to write a case statement and here you will find this context function when my role is equals to system admin just show the data as is this is the value of the column and if the role is user admin then i can partially mask the data and if the role is other than system admin or an user admin then mask the entire data set so this is the rule i am encapsulating inside my policy object and once this policy object is created i am going to attach this policy with the column under my customer table now let's create this policy so my masking policy is created successfully now i can run a show command to list all the masking policy under this schema so i have only one masking policy called pii masking policy database is demo schema is my schema and this is the policy type which is called masking policy owner is system admin i can also describe my masking policy so i can write describe masking policy followed by name of the masking policy let me run this and when you describe shows name signature which is nothing but the column value followed by data type the type and the return type and the actual body so this is how it looks like you can also execute get detail function and the first input parameter should be policy second input parameter should be the name of the policy let's see what does it return entire policy definition is available in form of ddl so you can use the get ddl function for policy object too now before we go and associate this masking policy with our column within the customer table let's see if i can find my masking policy in the information schema for that i can quickly go to my database and i can go to demo db and here i can see information schema and i have all the views under the information schema and if you have not seen my other video where information schema is explained in detail i would request you to go and watch this video so if i scroll down i do not see any object called policy or a masking policy in this view however if i go to account usage here i have the views and if i scroll down i can see a view called policy reference and account usage schema is visible only if you are having account admin role access now let me click and show you what does it hold let me shrink this so if i go to the data preview if i click on the column 
and this is if I click on the ordinal so it has total 15 column and it contains in which database this masking policy is created what is the schema name what is a policy ID each policy has an ID policy name and policy kind if it is a masking policy then it will be masking policy if it is other kind of policy then it will have a different value for this column let me click on the data preview so all the policy will be listed here since I have created my policy just now, it may take a while to come to this account usage schema. And if you do not know the importance of account usage schema, I would request you to go and watch this particular video, which covers everything about information schema followed by account usage schema. Now I have my masking policy available, which will help me to mask a particular column value as needed. Now, how can I associate that masking policy with my customer table for that i have to run an alter table command where i am setting a masking policy with my column government id so this is how the sql looks like and let me execute this sql statement so this statement executed successfully now let me go and describe the table once again If you see here, this masking policy, PII underscore masking underscore policy is now coming under policy name. Alternatively, I can go to database option. I can go to demo database, my schema table. And this shows that this PII masking policy is attached with my government ID field under the customer table. And the policy argument is PII underscore text map to government id this is the visual way to identify your masking policy you can click on this small delete icon and detach this masking policy alternatively you can also run the unset masking policy alter command and that will detach your policy from this government id field now my masking policy is up and running and it has been associated with my customer government id column now, so if i click on the data preview i can see all the data set and the role through which I am accessing this table is account admin. That's why all the data is coming as a mask. So my column level security or so-called dynamic data masking is functioning. If I change this role to public, let's see what happens. I have to select a warehouse. Public role has access to compute warehouse. That's why only one entry is visible. And I click on a preview. Here also my data is masked. If I change my role to user admin, and if you look into the result, this is my partial mask data is available. That is how this dynamic data masking or so-called dynamic column level security works in Snowflake. Now let me go back to my worksheet. Let's quickly change the role here. So I am changing the role to the user admin and I am trying to run the select statement from this worksheet. And I can see my government ID data is masked. So no matter where you access this data from, as per the rule, this dynamic data masking will ensure that your data is being masked or obfuscated and it will follow that masking policy to ensure that sensitive data is visible as per your policy rule. Now this is my another masking policy called credit card masking policy and it is taking a card number of data type string and it also returns a string and here the rule says if it is a system admin then the card number will be visible as is. If the current role is in user admin, it will follow a regular expression rule. Only the last four characters will be visible to the user admin role. Other than this two role, nobody else can see the card data. And the finally, this text will be visible to the user. Now, let me create this masking policy. So I do not have sufficient privileges for that. I need to change my role to system admin. So my masking policy is created and if you look into the line number 109, I am altering the customer table and associating this masking policy with the credit card number field. Let's do that. So it is done. Now I'm going to create another masking policy called date of birth masking policy. And if you look into the data type here, the data type is a date and this is also returning a date data type. Now, I cannot use a string character here. I need to make sure that if I have to mask the date, I have to give some date compatible data. And this is how I'm returning. 
So only system admin would be able to see the actual date of birth. All other user other than system admin will see this dummy date of birth. Now let me create this. And let me associate this masking policy with my date of birth column in my customer table. So this is done. If I go and run show masking policies, I should have three masking policy within my schema. So these are three masking policy and I can see the kind is masking policy. Now if I go to my database and customer table, so my government ID is protected using PII masking policy. The date of birth is protected using date of birth masking policy and it takes date of birth argument and map to date of birth. And if I hover on this credit card masking policy, it is taking a varchar and map to credit card number. This is my system admin role. And if I click on a data preview, I'm able to see government ID, date of birth, annual income, and credit card without any masking. When I change this role to the public role, let's see what happens. Now government ID is coming as a masked, date of birth is obfuscated value and credit card number is coming as masked data. If I change the role to user admin, here the result is partially masked, government ID last four number is visible, even in credit card the last four number is visible. Now what if I have to mask card provider, how can I do that? So there are two ways, either I can create a new masking policy or I can attach the same masking policy which I have used for other field. Let's try to attach the PII masking policy for card provider and let's see how does it behave. So if you look into the line number 92 where I am altering the table associating the same PII masking policy with the card provider. But if you look into the rule here it is applying some regular expression and this regular expression may not work appropriately but let's see what result does it bring. Here I'm making sure when I'm altering my customer table, I'm using the system admin role, which is the owner for this table. Let me run this alter statement. Now let's change the role. I'm trying to access the customer table with public role. So if you look into this card provider with the same PII text policy, I'm able to mask card provider text value. I don't need to create a new masking policy as long as data type matches. And let me change my role to user admin and see the behavior. Now I'm selecting user admin. Now let me rerun this customer select statement. And if you look into the result, it is still followed that regular expression. This doesn't make any sense to me. So whenever you are creating a masking policy, you can always reuse the masking policy. However, the masking rules, what you have applied or written inside your policy object need to be validated. We have observed that after attaching this policy for a different column, our masking rule was not working appropriately. So now let's understand how to alter a policy. Snowflake allows you to alter the policy by replacing this body. So let me copy and So if you look into line number 79, this is my alter keyword followed by the name of the masking policy which needs to be altered and the attribute which we are altering is a body followed by this particular arrow sign and then you need to put your revised body. Now what we have observed, this particular statement is not functioning as expected. So we are going to make minor changes. So I have added one additional case statement. If the length of the input text is equals to 11, as well as it is having a hyphen character, in that case, apply this replace function. For anything else, just call it type masked. And this I have given very specifically to validate if my masking policy is functioning appropriately or not. Now let me execute this alter statement. I am again making sure that I am having this role system admin. So it got executed.
So I have no specific challenge getting the data here. My card provider is coming as is for system admin role. Now, if I change my role from system admin to user admin, let's see what happens. Now, if you see card provider is coming as a type mast, which is a card provider type. And this is the statement which is getting executed. So this is how you can run the alter statement and alter your policy. If I have to unset a masking policy, I have to alter the table and modify the column properties and not to alter the policy. So this is again a user admin. Let me change this. So this is done. And if I go back to my user admin role and rerun this customer and this card provider should come as is. So my card provider with user admin role is coming correctly. Looks good. If I have to drop a policy and if the policy is already associate or mapped to a column, what happens? Now let's see what happens. It says policy cannot be dropped replaced as it is associated with one or more entities. Let's check that. So we have already unset, but these policies are still attached. So if I detach the policy, then only it will allow me to drop the policy. Let's simulate another scenario where I have to mask the annual income and the data type for annual income is decimal. So I'm going to create another masking policy which will mask this annual income and let's see how does it work and what happens if there is a data type mismatch let's see how snowflake masking policy works so if i look into this annual income it is number data type so this is my new masking policy called income masking policy and here this is the name it is taking a input value of type number and it is also returning a number type and condition is if the current role is a system admin, then it will return the income value as is. All other role, it will return minus 999.00. Now, let me create this policy and associate the policy with annual income. I just change my role. Let me create this. It got created successfully. Now, here I am setting this income masking policy to this column annual income. If I run this, so for system admin role, no masking is applied for annual income. Let me change the role and rerun the query. So this is my annual income coming minus 999.00. Looks good. Now let's unset and recreate this policy and try to give a different data type text number without decimal. So it has been unset successfully. Now, if I give text and try to recreate this masking policy, let's see what happens. So it clearly says that this is incompatible with the return type. So this data type should match with this data type, else you won't be able to create a policy. Now, what if I change this return type to seven by zero? In the sense, there is no decimal digit. Let's see what happens. So this has been created successfully. There is no specific issue. Let's try to understand how the where clause works on those column where column level security or a dynamic data masking is applied. So this is my first query where I am filtering the data based on card provider equals to MasterCard and government ID start with 77. So let me change my role quickly. Now let me execute this SQL statement, which is having where clause. So I have total five record. Now if I change my role to public, let's see what happens. And if I execute the same query, will I get a result? No, I do not have the result because public is not able to access the government ID and the data comes in a masked form. And that's why this where clause will not be able to fetch the necessary information. If I just change this user from public to user admin, let's see what happens. Now my role is user admin. I still don't have the data, but we know user admin can access the last four character. So if I 
let me change to the system admin and if i run this query where i am card provider is mastercard and the last character of the government id is zero and if i run this query with system admin role i got 34 records and if i use the user admin so my role is user admin here and let me execute the query i got the 34 the primary reason is even though masking policy is applied but government id is partially masked for user admin role so whenever you are querying a table where masking policy is applied for the pii column your where clause may not work as expected so you need to really really make sure you describe the table understand if any masking policy is applied it is also possible that i provide the obfuscated data set and that data set may not be masked but it is a jumbled character and that character will give you incorrect result So we have understood how to apply the masking policy and enable column level security in Snowflake without changing the underlying data and we can also apply the same masking policy for different column. Now what we have not seen how you can really use the power of tag to apply the masking policy. We have also not seen how this masking policy works when it comes to view. We also haven't touched how the masking policy works when it comes to the variant data type and what if you create a table using clone or create table as a select statement how the masking policy works so if you are interested to know the answer for all those questions i would suggest you to watch this set of video